From shop made to fancy, everyone needs a push stick for the table saw. Stick around and find out a design I think kind of covers all the bases. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. Today, we're talking push sticks. Now, this is a shop made push stick. It's something I came up with, a uh, design I, I made myself, and I think it's pretty cool, so I figured I'd share it with you guys. I'll go through the kind of the build process. It's drilling some holes in plywood and, you know, sanding it down, but I think it's pretty cool. Uh, what I think is unique about it is the fact that you have a handle here, and you have a handle here, and you get this little edge here, which grips on, hold on, sort of hooks onto the piece back here and helps guide it through. The other thing is, I've got a strip of sandpaper right here, uh, 120 grit. And so the idea is, is that grips on and it really locks in to help push material through. And the other thing is, it also helps it hold it tight against the fence, similar to a micro jig gripper, which also does the same thing, which I actually use quite a bit. But I found myself needing just a regular old push stick. And as some of you may know, I'm not really good with regular ol, and I always try and up it a little bit. So uh, the really cool thing about this actually is that we have a downloadable template on the website now. So hooray for something finally being on the website as far as a product. It's totally free. You guys can go and download it and print it out and use it as a template to make your own if you have the tooling to do so. And if not, I'm actually gonna batch a bunch of these out for you guys to buy as well, which will also be on the website. So super awesome. We're really stoked to have that on there. Let's jump into the build and see kind of the thought process that went behind making this. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Now, just as a reminder, links to some of our other videos and items we used in this video can be found in the description box below. Here you'll also find links to other stuff like Patreon, where you can help support this channel so we can keep making awesome videos, as well as where to find us on social media, our website, and contact info. Now, like most of my projects, this all started with a layout. Here I'm using three quarter inch plywood and I'm drawing everything out by hand. The angle ends up being 65 degrees on the protractor and then an inch and a half circle is drawn where those two corners meet. After that, I would go through and I would mark out where I wanted my inch and a quarter circles to be and space them all a quarter inch apart. The circles aren't necessary. I just thought it looked kind of cool and made it unique. And so that's why I added them in there. And once I had it laid out, I would go through with the center punch and I would punch a pilot hole in the center of each one of the circles. So a trip to the bandsaw would help me cut all these circular areas off efficiently. You could also use a jigsaw, and I suppose you could probably use maybe a coping saw or something if you were to do it by hand. But I have a bandsaw, so of course I took full advantage of it. And then I would put it on the spindle sander and belt sander to finish all the curvatures up and really smooth this thing out and flatten it out and clean it up. So once I had the first sanding down, I took it to the drill press and this is where I would just drill the holes. It's an inch and a quarter holes on the handles and it's an inch and a half where the two handles meet together. I didn't put this in the blue tape video, but I am using blue tape to secure some sandpaper down to a scrap piece of plywood. And this is where I'm gonna be able to have a nice flat sanding surface to get inside and on the edges where I can't get it on the belt sander. And then I put a slight chamfer all the way around it, including the inside the holes themselves. And I really wanted to leave this, but I didn't have a way of sanding it back down without rounding that over. So now it has a bit of a round over. So what makes this really stick, uh, no pun intended, is the sandpaper. So here I'm cutting a piece of half inch 120 grit sandpaper and I'm actually gonna use contact cement to stick it to the base of the handles.
And as you can see, it just works like a push stick. It works really well for keeping material up tight against the fence where it wants to pull. Cutting on the table saw by nature wants to pull sort of towards the fence because you have opposing forces going on there. So the grippy part of the sandpaper actually allows you to push it closer to the fence and not have it hopefully wander off on you. I've had this thing made up now for, I don't know, I'm gonna say a week at the time of recording this and I've used it all the time, it's great. Uh, before, I would always make kind of a shop made deal. You can just take a two by six or something and just you know cut a little notch in it and away you go and that works great. I also like using that system when I have stock that I wanna push both the waste piece and the cut piece through the blade at the same time. Uh, a lot of times you don't need to do that. I can't stand push sticks like this normally because I feel like they're not very well thought out a lot of times. Let's just say they're on the cheap end. I don't know how else to explain that. But you get the one that's like a plastic stick and you're supposed to push it through. My bandsaw came with that and I think I threw it away. I don't think I ever used it. They're just, they're not ergonomically comfortable and I really don't feel safe with them, which is ironic because they're sort of a piece of safety equipment. With this, and one thing I've learned is that if you put most of your weight on the heel, it prevents any rocking or at least minimizes it. And so as you're pushing through, if you actually put the weight on the heel of it, you actually glide right through. And like I say, with the grippiness on the bottom, that helps as well. The other cool thing about this one is that when you run it through the saw and you just kind of toss it off to the side, no matter which way you pick this up, you're gonna be able to use it because we can use it this way, right? Where we have it like this and this is our handle. But if you were to flip it this way, you could use it as well. The other neat thing about that is let's say you're pushing this through the saw and you're less than three quarters of an inch for your keep piece, the piece you're gonna hold on to, and you end up running the saw blade through here. Well, for one, um, it's gonna take quite a few cuts obviously to really um, make this unusable, but you have the other piece. So if an accident does happen and you tend to cut through here, you're gonna be just fine. Now me personally, I'm probably not gonna use this on stuff that's um, less than, th than three quarters of an inch anyways because I'm gonna use the gripper most likely, um, which I, is one of the tools I really like in the shop just for those really narrow, uh, I think I have even an eighth inch or a quarter inch foot for it and it just works really well at sliding stuff past that blade. For, for an everyday, um, push stick, I think this is I think this is a keeper. So, enough rambling. If you guys would like to make your own, again, we have a free template on the website now, super awesome. And then uh, if you don't have the tooling to do this, but you would still like to buy one, and if all else, at least it helps support us, to be absolutely honest with you, uh, these are listed on the website now. So, go check them out uh, if you want. I think they're pretty cool. Let me know what you think, if you would have designed it different, if you would have done anything. Did I go too far? Um, I don't think so. I mean, it's just a scrap piece of plywood we had kicking around. So anyways, let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see you guys in the next video.